When I was super young, I'm talking four, five years old, my mom had already amassed a collection of music CDs that would rival even the biggest of collectors. In a sea of pop rock, pop country, and hair metal, lied one single CD that I was not allowed to listen to. This album was banned from the car, banned from my portable CD player, it was just flat out banned completely. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that one day I managed to slip it out of the giant travel book when my mom wasn't looking, and after everyone had went to bed, I stuck it into my blue Venter boombox and turned it on as quiet as I could listening all the way from start to finish. This was the day my life changed. This is the day I first heard Devil Without a Cause by Kid Rock. Robert James Ritchie, best known by his stage name Kid Rock, is undeniably an American icon at this point, having been nominated for numerous awards and even being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Not only does he hold all those accolades, but he also has the honor of being my all-time favorite musician all the way up to the age of 14, where he was promptly dethroned by Phil Collins. But when we consider Kid Rock in a modern context, the music begins to take a back seat. Really, it's no surprise if you ask me, he hasn't released a good album in nearly 20 years, and even as recently as 2018, he almost exclusively plays legacy hits at his concert. No, in the 2023rd year of our Lord, Kid Rock is best known for being one of the most outspoken and controversial figures in the American conservative movement. Yeah, that's, that's where we're at pretty much. Now, I still love Kid Rock, okay? I always have. His was the look that I did everything I could to chase in sixth grade. Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you tell? I even agree with him more often than I disagree with him when it comes to his nuclear takes. Why don't we do a deep dive into some of these? This video is a look into the controversial history of Kid Rock. What am I doing with my life? Now this is gonna be an absolute roller coaster of a video, so you're gonna want to strap in. Following the trajectory of Kid Rock's political views is like trying to find an honest man in Congress. All right, you're gonna have a difficult go at it, pretty much. Super Bowl 38, February 8th. 2004, Kid Rock was still riding the success of Devil Without a Cause, and he landed the Super Bowl halftime show for the Panthers-Patriots matchup. Kid Rock is one who's never shied away from his expressions of patriotism, and during this performance he created a poncho out of an American flag. 2004 was a very, very different time. I know a lot of people out there weren't even alive at this point in time when this incident took place, and I know it's going to come as a real shock when I say that it was a Democrat from Georgia named Zell Miller who was ass mad about this display. He said, The thing that yanked my chain the hardest was seeing this ignoramus with his pointed head stuck up through the hole he had cut in the flag of the United States, yelling about having a bottle of scotch and watching lots of crotch. Just in case you were wondering, yes, this was the level of political discourse in 2004. Now that I think about it, not really much has changed in the last 20 years. Miller called for Kid Rock to be tarred and feathered and run out of the country for this. And a lawsuit, that's right, a lawsuit was pushed against CBS by the Veterans of Foreign Wars, which is an actual organization, by the way. The VFW said it was desecration of the flag, but if you actually look at the United States flag code on official government websites, basically everything is desecration of the flag, so yeah, you can take that for what it's worth. 
We are moving on from the ancient year of 2004 to the way more modern 2005 for this one. I know, massive time jump, I'm, I'm sorry. Kid Rock was brought on to sing at the inaugural address for George W. Bush, that's right, for his re-election in 2004, which I still don't understand how that happened. It does sound normal, doesn't it? You know, a Republican president asking Kid Rock to come play. Well, if you can believe it, this was a completely different era. All right, 2005, Kid Rock was nothing like 2023 Kid Rock. As it turns out, the campaign for children and families was absolutely mauling over Kid Rock's inclusion in the inauguration. Here is a direct quote from Karen, I mean Randy Thomason. I just read Kid Rock's sexually explicit lyrics and feel ashamed and dirty for even looking at his songs. If this sex-crazed animal, whose favorite word is the F-word, is allowed to sing at Bush's inauguration, this will send a clear message to pro-family Americans that the Republican Party has taken them for a ride and ditched them in the gutter. Man, it's just surreal to read this. This is an actual quote. It's crazy how you know, the world completely changes, and yet everything just stays the same. If you can believe it, there were no lawsuits related to this one. Let's move on to the next controversy, which did involve a lawsuit. 2006, or just once a year at least. We need, Kid Rock needs to be involved in a national cataclysm. In 2006, a series of sex tapes involving Kid Rock and the frontman of Christian metal band Creed, Scott Stapp, were leaked by porn distribution company Red Light District. Yeah, if this doesn't scream late 90s, I don't know what else you want from me. <laughs> Kid Rock and Stapp would file litigation against Red Light District for this incident. I mean, I kind of get this one. If they weren't getting any royalties from these tapes, then I get it, honestly. You gotta, you gotta grind for the bag, honestly. And we're gonna be jumping all the way from 2006 to 2007 for this one. I'm telling you, the man is consistent. At the MTV Video Music Awards, man, we have really just evolved as a species, haven't we? At the MTV Video Music Awards in 2007, Kid Rock got into a fist fight with Montley Crew drummer Tommy Lee Jones, you know, as one would do. They were both exes of Pamela Anderson, who honestly deserves a video like this herself. Kid Rock was given a citation for this and had to do community service for this incident. I don't know why. Personally, I think that punching Tommy Lee Jones is enough of a service to the music industry, but you do you. You do you, whoever served the citation. This one really wasn't political, but it's on the list. So, you know. 2011 is where this next incident takes place. Kid Rock was honored with a Great Expectations reward from the Detroit NAACP, which is a sentence no one would ever expect to be uttered in 2023. There was nonsense over this, of course. There were protesters outside that were mad in general, namely the National Action Network, which sounds both like a terrorist cell and a shittier version of Newsmax at the same time. Kid Rock said in an interview regarding the Confederate flag that he had stopped displaying the flag during concerts five years earlier in 2006. And he never flew the flag with hate in his heart, and it was mostly a tribute to Leonard Skinner and the idea of being a rebel in general. Kid Rock would still receive the award from the NAACP that night because, if you can believe it, nuance and context were things that actually mattered in 2011. 
Crazy, I know. Feels like an entirely different world, but it was only 12 years ago. You know? Absolutely wild. 2015, the year I graduated high school. And don't worry, I was no more attractive back then than I am now, all right? The National Action Network is back. Imagine that. They were protesting Kid Rock's involvement in the Detroit National Museum, demanding that he stop displaying the Confederate flag at his concerts, because they obviously weren't paying attention during the previous entry to this video. Of this controversy, Kid Rock was quoted as saying, please tell the people who are protesting to kiss my ass. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Put that on a t-shirt, seriously. Also in 2015, Kid Rock drew controversy when a photo of him and Ted Nugent holding a dead cougar was released. Obviously at this point, Kid Rock hadn't pissed off enough national organizations, so you know what, what's PETA in the list of people pissed off at Kid Rock, eh? This one that we just talked about was really the first social media era entry, so these are going to become a lot more frequent and a lot more petty. So the pace of this video is going to pick up soon, so be patient. It's still 2015 and we are picking up with a large contingent of mediocre country singers that were mad about Michael Moore and Seth Rogen hating on the movie American Sniper. Now, my opinion on the American Sniper movie is very well known on this channel, but that doesn't change the fact that Kids Rock's criticisms of the two is absolutely cutting. Fuck you, Michael Moore, says Kid Rock. You're a piece of shit and your uncle would be ashamed of you. Seth Rogen, your uncle probably molested you. I hope both of you catch a fist to the face soon. Strong words from the legend. I endorse this statement in full. You can quote me on this. 2016 is the year that everything changed. I think everyone will agree with me on this. Society has just not been the same since 2016, for better or for worse. I'm gonna go with worse personally. Kid Rock was playing at a concert in Boston, and he was playing Born Free, which can be pinpointed as the exact moment that his musical career officially bombed. He took a quick moment to shout, And fuck Colin Kaepernick! Which, yeah, to be fair, I completely agree with. If you can be an utterly mediocre NFL quarterback and pick up hundreds of millions of dollars in endorsements, after you flunked out of the sport and still claim that there's systematic racism in pop culture, you've officially lost the plot. That's another statement that I endorse in full, by the way. You can quote me on that one, too. After Donald Trump successfully defeated the purest evil in America, Hillary Clinton, Kid Rock launched some new t-shirt campaigns like a desperate YouTuber. By the way, I have a merch shop that you can find by following the link in the description or checking out the channel's main page. I have many wonderful items, such as this notebook with a really interesting um, cover. I also have a wife beater with the Door Incorporated logo on it. That's a good one. And if you're not satisfied with any of that, check out this shower curtain with my logo all over it. High quality stuff. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Check out the link in the description. One of the shirts that Kid Rock released read, Arnold Trump. The D is missing because it's in every hater's mouth. Another shirt listed red states as the United States of America and blue states as, quote, dumb fuckistan. Biting social commentary. I've heard better insults in a junior high cafeteria, and I'm not even kidding. Kid Rock's true foray into the political arena came in 2017 when he launched a satirical Kid Rock for Senate program. And I say satirical because I legit think he could have won. <laughs> I'd vote for Kid Rock, but I voted for Jill Stein in 2016, so you can take that for what it's worth. I remember going to his show in Sturgis in 2018, and he went into one of those Kid Rock for Senate skits. Gotta say, he made a strong case. The Federal Election Commission agreed that it was not a serious political undertaking. Really, this just says more about society, that they thought Kid Rock was actually legitimately running for public office, just because he made a t-shirt out of it. I think I might do the same, honestly. Kamikaze Games for President 2024. For realsies, guys. 
In 2017, Kid Rock was chosen as a headlining artist to celebrate the opening of Detroit's Little Caesars Arena. Yum! Give me some of that. People called this move tone deaf, and no, they're not describing the person who okayed First Kiss to be distributed. National Action Network's here again. Because of course they are. Also in 2017, he made his first real statement about identity politics. He's quoted as saying, Things shouldn't be this complicated, and no, you don't get to choose, because whatever you have between your legs should determine the bathroom that you use. Can I even say this on YouTube? If Kid Rock is the reason I lose my channel, I'm actually gonna break shit, all right? <laughs> In 2019, he mocked Taylor Swift for voting Democrat. He's quoted as saying, Taylor Swift wants to be a Democrat because she wants to be in movies, period. And it looks like she will suck the doorknob off Holly Weird to get there. As the biggest Taylor Swift hater on the internet, I approve of the statement. Another one that you can quote me on. 2021, he hosted the return of Morgan Wallen, who made the cardinal sin of saying the forbidden word on camera. I don't even know who Morgan Wallen is, nor do I care. Also in 2021, he called people filming on their phones at his concerts fucking faggots. As a faggot myself, I hereby present Kid Rock with a F-word pass, free of charge, unlimited use. And finally, we have made it to current year and the main controversy of the evening, the Bud Light video. Barely anyone said a word about this when it originally happened. It was Kid Rock who lit the wicker that started the absolute bonfire that is um, Anheuser-Busch in its current in its current state. <laughs> On April 3rd, 2023, Kid Rock posted a video of him firing an AR-15 into Bud Light cans. I know, I know, this is seriously controversial and I'm sorry. But I'm not a gun guy, so I don't know if it's actually an AR-15. I would like to personally apologize to anyone in the viewing audience that happens to be a gun fan for this cardinal sin. I am genuinely sorry. I just I just do not know if this is an AR-15. Yeah, no one was really taking the Bud Light boycott seriously until Kid Rock stepped into the picture, so you can't say he isn't still an influential figure in the public square. So that's the entire list. I know there are way more smaller scale events that Kid Rock has been part of, but I think this video is quite long enough, so I'm going to leave it here. What's your favorite Kid Rock controversy, huh? Leave it in the comments section. I think mine is the sex tape that he made with the lead singer of Creed. My legal team is advising me to clarify that when I say sex tape he made with Scott Stapp, I mean Scott Stapp was also receiving blowjobs, and it was not from Kid Rock. So I want to be perfectly clear about that. Thanks for watching whatever this video was. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I don't know what to say. This has been the video. Thanks for watching. Bye! So you can you just be like, oh, ah, like a fucking banshee. <laughs> the video just ends immediately. It knows. It knows. Oh god. Oh, it's so bad. Why? Why would I do this? Why would I allow this to exist? What have I done? No. What have I done?